rumor had it that Renault Megane RS wasn't hardcore enough. And sometimes it is true, these sporty cars just aren't enough. But with the cab chassis, lowest ground clearance in its segment, things are getting much hotter. Let's take this sexy French for a spin and see if it truly is hardcore enough. As you can see, the car is absolutely filthy. It's already been placed this today, but it's not going to hurt to do this again. Under the bonnet, I only have 1.8 litre turbocharged petrol engine. So what's the fuss? Well, Renault has managed to squeeze as much as 300 horses out of this. 420 newton meters of torque. We've got 20 horses more than regular Megane RS. And Renault is one of the manufacturers that is still offering both automatic and manual gearbox in their hot hatches. Today I've got the automatic, which is a dual clutch EDC gearbox. Very quick, smooth, no pulls, no hiccups. It knows exactly where it needs to be at all points in time. So the declared 0 to 100 is only 4.7 seconds. So as you get into this car, you think, well, it's going to be pretty quick. I mean, it's bound to be quick. It's a hot hatch. You put your foot down in a neutral mode and it goes nicely. Oh yeah. You're feeling very confident. I mean, it is a winter wonderland here. It's slippery, it is icy, the temperatures are below zero. But as you drive in a neutral mode, you somehow feel, well, there's a tiny bit of a turbo lag because you do have to wait a little bit before it kicks in. So as you get a little bit more comfortable, you think, well, a bit overconfident, I'd say. You pop this into race mode. The traction's off and you put your foot down. And oh boy, this thing, it flies, literally, I mean, what you just said about the turbo lag, yeah, it was all bull. <laughs> and as the regular RS is relatively quiet, this thing can roar, oh boy, it is so vocal. <laughs> and straight away you think, blim and the hell, you are stupid driving this way on a road like this. But you simply just can't help yourself. The cabin is nearly identical to the regular Megane, but there's plenty of sporty flavor, starting with this Alcantara Recaro seat. $3,000 later, but they're well worth it. Alcantara and leather steering wheel, $400, but this is actually really good value for money. There's quite a bit of cheap and nasty plastic, some nice materials, a bit of a mishmash. But do you really care about the cabin in this kind of a car? Of course not. And let's move on to the infotainment system, shall we? Well, that's going to take a while because the system itself requires a lot of patience and learning. Intuitive, it is not. A proper French labyrinth. Once you get in, well, good luck getting out. The graphics are basic. The submenus are frustrating. And I have kind of given up. You can resolve it to a certain extent by plugging in your iPhone because it's got an Apple CarPlay. Android Auto as well, but hey, it's a French car, you already knew that. In terms of space, actually, there's plenty. There's a reduced uh, boot space to 294 litres, which is less than in a Clio. That is because of the chassis, because of the steering and the exhaust system, which I think is absolutely worth it. And as you continue to drive this car in the race mode, it pops, it bangs, and it creates beautiful music to your ears. And it's just addictive. Anyway, we've got four control steering, which is simply the type of four wheel steering. What this means is that at lower speeds, your back wheels turn in the opposite direction to your front wheels. And at higher speeds, they turn in the same direction to improve your stability. As for the steering itself, it is very quick, precise and extremely sharp. It feels very active. Some might say borderline hyperactive. And it is true in the race mode, it feels a bit like it's, the steering has had a triple espresso this morning. And let me tell you, if you want to drive this car in the race mode on a slippery road, yeah, you better have a triple espresso yourself. Otherwise, you'll be driving off road. It's not exactly a car for off-road. But can you help yourself? Nah, not really. 
Right, let's talk about comfort in this car. No, let's talk about the suspension, which is significantly stiffer than it is in the regular Megane RS. It feels sporty, firm and hard, just the way it is supposed to feel. And as a result, this car grips extremely well. The handling is simply superb. I've heard some people saying that handling here is questionable. Really? That is just a nasty thing to say. Let me tell you, if a blonde like me can drive fast, confidently, on a road that is icy, slippery, narrow and twisty, yeah, the handling is pretty good. But as a daily driver and long distance cruiser, the suspension is a bit of a delicate snowflake because it will fidget at every single opportunity. And it might not be everybody's cup of tea because it can be exhausting for some, certainly. And if you're a passenger in the sky, well, not everybody's stomach is going to handle it. Personally, yeah, what can I say? This is exactly the kind of suspension I like to have in a hot hatch. <laughs> oh, I like to do that. Lift my foot off the throttle when I'm in a race mode, but anyway. We shall pop it really to neutral mode, shouldn't we? So we've covered comfort, fuel economy. The declared fuel economy mixture of city and motorway is just under 8 litres. Really? Little French liar? Be prepared to spend about 10 liters, Pure City is about 12 liters, and if you want to push this car and have a bit of fun, well, up to 20 liters, which is absolutely worth it. Okay, money honey, the base price of trophy in Switzerland is just under 44,000 Swiss francs. This is more or less an equivalent to the US dollar. The model I have me today is worth just under 51k, and this includes the Alcantara Recaro seat, about 3k, the orange paint color about 2k 51k to be honest with you i think it's good value for money anyway let's pop you into sport mode and although this is a front wheel drive car your rear feels very alive and extremely playful did i mention the grip mm, well it's worth repeating because it is this good so this car's direct competition is, for example, Focus ST. And as much as I love Focus ST, it's a bit of a car that tries to please everybody. It wants to be the sexy, fast, hot hatch. It wants to be a good daily driver. A jack of all trades, a bit, sorry, Ford. Whilst this, on the other hand, is a hardcore hot hatch without compromises. Renault knows very well that I've got an extremely good product that is fit for purpose. And it's a bit like with the French. You want to come in and compromise, you want to question and argue well, and rightfully so. Because you see what the French have done, they've once again built a car for true petrol heads. They've turned this little compact car into a proper monster. That is fast, that is fun, that is furious, and that is simply incredible. And that's it for today. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye!